Not the same old song, folks. Not the same old song. Not the same old song. What do you say, Bearcats? What do you say? Get your ass in, Hoo-Hoo Danny. What are you doing? Welcome into the chat room, everyone. Leave your thoughts. Bearcats, depleted or not, whether the Jayhawks were missing a wing or not, Cincinnati just wrecked Kansas. Wrecked them. Ran them off the floor in Kansas City. Houdini, what do you say? Kylan, you can make that cameo now. Got a happy wife in the background. Let's go, folks. Let's go. Let's update this final score, Houdini. What do you got for me? Let me turn off the mems. Um, but this is why the Bearcats are hot. They've won Big three Jizzle in a row. Big James fan. Big Jizzle James fan right here. That's all you need to know. Huge Jizzle James fan in the house. Close the door. Thank you. Love you. To hear it. She's taking the auxiliary. Actually, I'm in the auxiliary studio again. Kylan is taking a Studio A tonight. But the Bearcats just absolutely wrecked the Kansas Jayhawks. 72-52. We don't have a final score. We're waiting to go final. But opening thoughts, Houdini. I know it's late. I know it's a school night. Screw school! Parents aren't home! Bearcats after dark, baby. We're doing it again tomorrow night. Um, you love it. You love to see it. Uh, everyone was going nuts. So yeah, Hunter Dickinson, McCuller, they're out. That's fine. They still have KJ Adams. They still have a projected first round pick in Furphy. They still have, you know, apparently the, you know, one of the most pure point guards in college basketball, who's I think going into his ninth year as a Kansas Jayhawk and Dewan Harris. They still have a roster and to come out there and beat them by 20. We will take it, man. Let's keep the season alive. I'm having a little bit of fun. We, we got a lot of work to do ahead of us. We got Baylor. Same time tomorrow night, brother. Same time tomorrow night. Same time, knuckleheads. Uh, do we have a final score? Can I update that? 72-52, yeah. is that the final tally? Bearcats win it? That's the final. That's that the final, yes. We Bearcats love to hear. won it. <laughs> Come on in. Go tell your milkman that cheers on the Bearcats. Go tell your aunts, your uncles, the local librarian. It's Chatterbox Bearcats after dark with Chuck and Houdini. Welcome, everyone. Here we go. All right, so we're shaking Wes Miller's hand. Congratulations, Wes. Massive win in the Big 12 tournament. And Bob Huggins pops out of the casket and says, we are not dead yet. Welcome to Chatterbox Bearcats, everyone, with Chuck and Houdini. Cincinnati in Kansas City, where the Kansas Jayhawks have been dominant in this tournament for decades. Just got their asses spanked by the Cincinnati Bearcats. A 20-point drubbing. Kansas tried to make it close midway through the second half. We were thinking, oh, no, the Bearcats are going to crumble. They never make it easy. And, boy, did they make it easy today. The walk-ons could have laced them up if they wanted to. I don't know if I, they'd made it easy. They got it down to, what, three points in the second half? I was starting to get a little terrified. Um, and then, I mean, we, we just manhandled them. Um, I've never seen it. The refs started – 
even calling foul calls because it seemed like they kind of just felt bad for Kansas. We were that much bigger. I mean, shit, they only had Dickinson out, and we were bullying them. It, it looked like we were playing some walk-ons on the other uh, – the B squad of Kansas. Um, but you got to you gotta take what you can. Sometimes need a little bit of luck, um, the starters being out. I mean, honestly, we played them well with both of those guys around. We played Dickinson very well, probably one of his worst games of the year. I wouldn't have mind seeing Dick and, uh, Dickinson in this game because um, I think it would have helped with a committee standpoint with these wins. Um, but that's a quad one regardless. The quad one, we're, we're going to take it. And we're we'll might, we might be peaking. It. We might be peaking at the right time, Chuck. That's what they say. The most important thing, peaking at the right time. And you know what this win does for Cincinnati ever so slightly – Ever so slightly. Not the March music, but... He's a bubble boy. A bubble boy? Yes, a bubble boy. The Cincinnati Bearcats may be bubble boys. Not quite yet. They got to beat Baylor. But at this point in the season, with 20 wins, now nine total Big 12 wins, you add in another quad one, and I don't know what the committee does with a win like this over Kansas, who uh, essentially keeping... Hunter Dickinson out of the game and getting him ready for the NCAA tournament. I mean, still a quad one win. The computers st still say it's a nice win. But at the same time, at the very least, you go into a Baylor game that if you win, it's time to wake up the Bunker Boy. It's time to go find Lenardi, shake him a little bit, and say, Bunker Boy, Bearcats are back on the radar. Maybe like a next four out. Can we get a bracketology tomorrow and a next four out? Hold on. Hold on. So Phone one. Hold on. Phone one. We got the Razor. This is Lenardi on line one. Joe, where are the Bearcats? Next four to the next four. Okay, hold on. I got I got the other burner ringing. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, is this Jerry Palm? No, it's Ken Palm. Ken Palm, how are we? Next four. Good to, good to see you, Ken Palm. Uh, Bearcats, next four out per Ken Palm. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, well, he's listing us right now. Lenardi, he claims he's going to do – the, the bracketology matrix update every day. He doesn't. I call him out. He didn't do it today. But on the last one, the prior one, we were actually under not the first four out, not the next four out, teams to be considered. So we were like 11th. Wow. We got to jump in to the next four out, I would think, after this one. If we beat Baylor, then I think at that point we're firmly on the bubble and all it takes is a miracle to happen on Selection Sunday. If we can beat Baylor, I think we're in a good spot. And then you're going to have to play Iowa State, I would assume, at that point, who that defense is not something I want to mess with personally. But Baylor, I think we match up well with Baylor. We played Baylor well on the road. We could do it again. Without Aziz Bandego, don't forget that. And Victor Locken found out of that game, the Bearcats shot horribly, and they were still right in it. Uh, Dan Skillings really kept them in it. But, man, this was a fishy spread. Cincinnati was... Two and a half point favorites I saw on some books. And I'm thinking, if I'm not a Bearcats fan, knowing what I know about the Kansas Jayhawks in this tournament and having five stars littering the bench and still having a talented team. I mean, Furphy's an NBA guy. Adams is a star. They have good players on that team. And to see the Bearcats as favorites after they just played a tough matchup with West Virginia, I was thinking I may call up my cousin that I haven't seen in a while and tell him to put the mortgage on Kansas. Johnny's college fund going on the Jayhawks in this one. Now, I can't do that because I'm biased. I would never put money on the opposite team. And thank God I didn't because I would imagine there are a lot of people out there tonight that hammered the Kansas Jayhawks, but we knew it was fishy. And it's always nice when your team is that fishy spread because you're like, no way we lose this. Everyone in Vegas has to be hammering Kansas. I didn't look at the final percentage on who bet what, but I would imagine Kansas was probably the consensus pick getting points in the Big 12 tournament to a seven-win Big 12 team. Oh, yeah. If you're if you're picking like a square, you saw this, you immediately hammer Kansas. If you, if you weren't following, you probably didn't know there were some injuries. I had many people that are non-biased say they were going to hammer Kansas. There was, I think, uh, like 80% of the actual tickets were on Kansas, but Majority of money was on UC. Sharps were on our side. Um, and I got him at two and a half. I was, you know, sweating my balls off when it got down to three. I was like, we can't, we can't not do this and blow this lead. Um, and shout out Cincinnati Jungle 23. Just threw us five bucks in the, in the chat. 
Dan Dan, here's our man, was his saying, and he sure was. Cincinnati Jungle 23, I want $10 once we beat Baylor. And then I want 20 at Iowa State, and then I want 1000 when we make the tournament. And then, I want, Thank you. Thank you. and then I want 5000 when the Bearcats somehow come back from the dead and win a national championship. But first things first, let's knock on wood and let's talk about Danzis. Danzis Skillings. Whenever Dan Skillings takes on the Kansas Jayhawks, he turns into Danzis. You remember how good he was in Lawrence. He was the main reason, him and a spurt of Jizzle James, why Cincinnati had a shot down the stretch. Today he took over was the best player on the basketball floor by a long shot. 10 of 23, 2 of 6, 3 of 3 from the line. He had 7 rebounds, a couple of assists, a block, and 25 points to lead the Bearcats. Joining them in double figures, John Newman with 12, Seamus Lukosius with 10, and Jizzle James with 11. As Cincinnati only shot at 38% from the floor, 9 of 26 from deep, but Danzas, man, Two plays I jotted down on my Palm Pilot during the game. One, Dan Skillings misses a three. I think it's 41-38. Correct me if I'm wrong. But 41-38, Dan Skillings misses a three poorly, tracks his own rebound off the miss, lays it right up and in. Bearcats up five. Moments later, Skillings knocks down a three. Bearcats go up eight, and they never really looked back. Dan Skillings, Chatterbox Bearcats player of the game. Absolutely. I, I love watching him play, man, because it seems like, and, and now I'm, I'm coming around on it, his offense is essentially, I'm just going to do that spin move. I'm going to get the ball up to the rim one way or the other. If he misses it, so what? He's going to go get it again and throw it back up. I mean, he went 10 of 23. What did he finish with? 25. He should have had 35. He missed the easiest shots of the night. He missed them egregiously, just layup bunnies, and then would make these spinning, twirling, under-the-rim reverse layups. Um, he, he's going to be dangerous. He was an honorable mention, all Big 12. Uh, he's going to be on one of those teams next year. And in this core, and I've been saying it, if we keep this core together, we're going to be good for a couple years to come, man. They were exciting. So who do we hate right now is the big question that we're talking about. And the answer is that everyone that pretty much has a net ranking higher than the Cincinnati Bearcats, we hate. One of those teams, Kansas State, played in the Big 12 tournament today. They won over Texas. That helps their cause. Cincinnati holds the head-to-head. -head. Big question, committee, how many teams do they let in from the Big 12? Do they cap it off at some point and say, no, these Big 12 teams have scammed the Ken Palm system. They've scammed the net rankings with their out-of-conference schedules just beating the absolute shit out of everyone. That's a question. How many teams will they let in from the Big 12? Could Cincinnati be fighting with Kansas State for that spot? One way to beat them out, just get to the championship, and there'll be no issues there. But the team Cincinnati's fighting with right now, and the Bearcats are 43rd in the net ranking as of 10.58 Central Time, 11.58 Eastern Time. Close to midnight, they are 43rd. Indiana State, who has their zero quad one wins, Northwestern, Mississippi State, Colorado State, Boise State. We're fighting with a lot of Mountain West teams. Screw the Mountain West. Florida Atlantic is in there somewhat maybe on the bubble. Probably not. Villanova, Nevada, New Mexico. Four teams from the Mountain West. The question's going to be, if Cincinnati can beat Baylor, how much do they value the Mountain West compared to the Big 12? Because... Those are going to be one of the last four teams in is going to be from the Big 12, and one of the last four teams in is going to be from the Mountain West. The question is, which team from which league, where do we slide in? Um, Cincinnati probably does not have a shot. Were they to lose to Baylor? But, hey, survive in advance. That's all we ask. Who do we hate right now? Wake Forest we definitely hate. We want them to lose tomorrow, no doubt about it. Well. I think Wake. I think Wake and Pitt are playing. It's so hard to tell. There's so many moving pieces right now because it's too early. Um, but Villanova. I don't know if you saw that. They they're firmly on the bubble. They just squeaked by DePaul, who I think has literally not won a game in like they're two and thirty eight this year, and they lost by one. Former Bearcat Villanova. great that Tony Stubblefield. Tony Stubblefield let go uh, mid season. Pour one out for uh, Stubblefield. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, and then, and then it's going to come down to, as far as the rankings and the net rankings and everyone's, oh, the Big 12, they rigged the rankings. Oh, my God, they beat the shit out of Merrimack by 40 and it helped their net. 
You can't change the rules just because you don't like the outcome, okay? We're playing by the rules, and the rules state that the Big 12 is by far the best conference in, in all the land. So I, I think – I don't even know why Kansas State would be ahead of us in any type of ranking. We have a better net ranking. We beat them head-to-head. I don't understand how they're even in the conversation. They'll probably lose to Iowa State. So I, I don't think they're going to be a big issue for us to leapfrog. At the end of the day, we got to be Baylor. Once we beat Baylor, we'll be able to talk a little more clearer of a, of a picture of what getting into the tournament really looks like. But, hey, if you would have told me we're in the third round of the Big 12 tournament, um, you know, two weeks ago, I'd feel pretty damn good about it. Who did you say is firmly on the bubble and beat DePaul? Who did you say? Villanova. Villanova! Villanova should not be in the tournament. I've been saying that since 2011, Houdini. Villanova should not be in the tournament. Uncle Jay's gone. The Wildcats are done. Since 2021, and this comes from Viva La Cats, good account on Twitter. Since 2021, only 10 eligible teams, that's 7%, who finished the season in the top 45 of the net did not reach the big dance as an at-large team. UC is 43. Teams above them, as I mentioned, that – we also want to lose St. John's, Nebraska, Florida, Utah State's in there, um, Washington State's in that mix, Mississippi State. So a lot of teams right now that the Bearcats hate. The question's going to come down to, because I saw Brendel on Twitter the other day, and Brendel doesn't make the rules. Yes, he, he's got his ear close to the ground, but he doesn't know any more about the committee than I do. He's not looking at the computers at the end of the day. He's just going to the pressers. With that being said, he thinks that Cincinnati has to go to the championship game at least to make the NCAA tournament. I say that's hogwash. I say that's a bunch of crap. All Cincinnati's got to do is beat Baylor, and they're right there on the bubble. It's going to come down to what the other teams do, how much do they value Wake Forest, and go look through Wake Forest's schedule, man. If Cincinnati has wins over, over Baylor and over Kansas and over Texas Tech on the road and over... BYU on the road and over TCU and and has beaten six or seven tournament teams, whatever it may be. Come on now. And with all the close losses, too, that they factor into the net rankings, come on now. Wake Forest, duty. Mountain West, we don't need seven Mountain West teams in. I know that San Diego State had the run last year. But aside from San Diego State, the Mountain West sucks year in and year out. Utah State, how do they do in the tournament? They bow out first round as the nine seed. Colorado State, how do they do as the 10 seed? They bow out to the seven seed Dayton, whoever it may be. New Mexico, how do they do? They lose first round. Like, come on. The Mountain West, the propaganda needs to stop. The Big East is the best conference. Reward it. Cincinnati beats Baylor. They're in. They're in. But just keep winning, as the chat says. Just keep winning. Leave no doubt. Just keep winning. Keep winning. Beat Baylor would be huge. I think it would be crazy to leave us out at that point. But the the one team on the bubble that kind of blew it for us because they lost the automatic bid was the Indiana State with what what the hell, the Robbie Avila, the the, the seven-foot white dude, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Larry Nerd. College Jokic is what they're calling him. I would love to see he's nice. uh, that guy in the tournament. He, he's nice. He's nice. That's the one bubble team that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, thumbs up from the chatter um, as far as Indiana State because that would be a fun team to watch. But you beat Baylor, man. You keep us out after, you know, getting to the, what, semi, I guess, quarterfinals of the Big 12 tournament. That's tough to do, man. It's a tough league. Even beating Kansas with when they're, you know, underhanded as far as their roster is concerned it's still beating kansas man still a good team they're probably gonna be a four seed in the tournament so keep winning let's do it again i don't know why we're on the 9 30 slot literally every game until saturday which is just great for people that work i'm i'm excited i'm sure i'm gonna sleep well tonight um but yeah we got to keep doing it just pull the all-nighter hang out have fun watch sports center highlights over and over you remember back in the day you'd wait an hour and a half for those sports center highlights nowadays you just Go back on Fubo and, you know, watch the entire game that's recorded on your phone. Big 12 looked as such. BYU wins their opening Big 12 tournament game, 87-73 over Central Florida. See you, Knights. Great season in the Big 12. You lost the Bearcats twice. You bow out in your first game. UCF sucks. 
See ya, UCF. TCU 77, Oklahoma 70. A heated Porter Moser came to the press conference after Oklahoma's loss and said, you kidding me? You seen what this team has done healthy? The Sooners deserve a bid to the NCAA tournament. I agree. They do deserve a bid, but they fall to TCU 77-70. to There may be some sweat in there if we get to the fourth bracket and Porter and the team have not heard their names called. Kansas State 78-74, and I'll say it one more time. Cincinnati 72, Kansas 52. Big 12 looks like this tomorrow. It's officially the quarterfinals. All this hype, and we're only at the quarterfinals, Houdini. Good. I mean, what do we call yesterday's round, for God's sakes? I guess opening round. What do we call today's round? What's before the quarters? Just second round? You know what? Listen, I'm sick of people doing the quarter or semi bullshit. Just tell me it's the first, second, or third round. There's too many rounds in this damn tournament. We are now moving on to the third round, just so I don't sound like a jackass and start screwing it up. Texas Tech plays BYU in the third round. That'll be a good game. Houston plays TCU. Iowa State plays Kansas State. And Cincinnati plays Baylor. BYU already beat them. Texas Tech already beat them. Kansas State already beat them. TCU already beat them. Man, we get some we get some uh, some upsets, you know? Since he's got to take care of Baylor first, one step at a time. So, but we get some upsets, man. Iowa State loses to Kansas State, and somehow maybe Texas Tech makes it out of that side of the bracket. Never say never, man. I know we're not even halfway through this damn thing, but never say never. Cats are peaking at the right time. They are peaking at the right time. It just time. comes down to – no, they are, and they, they look good. And Like I said, I like this core. Um, we can compete with anybody all year. So I'm not afraid of Baylor by any stretch. It's going to come down to, especially if we beat Baylor and then lose the next round, Does what does the committee value? Does the committee value quad one wins? Because we're going to have a lot of them, but we're going to have a lot of losses too. And that's part of just being in the Big 12. I think now we're 4-10 and 10 in quad one, but you're looking at, you know, we had to play Houston twice, Baylor, Kansas, Iowa State. All teams are going to be in the top, you know, three or four seeds in the tournament. So I don't know if you can really fault them, but it's – it's going to come down to do they value those, you know, four wins or say, hey, they had 14 opportunities and only won four of them and kind of nick us for that. We'll see. Well, a couple of things. One, the non-conference slate. I know what Wes was doing. A, they schedule it in advance, right? Going into the first Big 12 season, obviously they're going to put some patsies on there as they get into the biggest gauntlet in the history of college basketball leagues. But the Merrimacks, the Stetsons, the the shit, Detroit. I think Detroit won one game this season. No reason to have them on the schedule. If we could have switched a few of those out for some right states and some Indiana states who we scrimmaged and maybe like a Maryland and some respectable teams, even if the Cats would have lost, they'd probably be sitting at a better spot. It's just so hard to look at a team that has 11 conference losses and then in the non-conference beat absolutely nobody, went in overtime with Howard and lost their two hardest games against Xavier and Dayton. It's hard to look at that team and be like, they deserve it. But if they beat Baylor, peaking at the right time, as you mentioned, they should have beaten Oklahoma. I know the computers don't factor that in, but anyone with eyeballs saw that Cincinnati was just as good as Oklahoma. I think anyone with eyeballs has seen that Cincinnati is just as good as any other 10-11 seed that's going to make it to the NCAA tournament. Now, do those gentlemen that order the 16 Big Macs and sit in their little bunker and watch college basketball for 48 straight hours, they don't even watch current college basketball because you know they don't factor in the semis of the championship in these conference tournaments. They sit in there and they watch the tape. They look at the computers. They phone their friends. They're talking to Lenardi. They got him on the horn. The question's going to become, do those guys – like Cincinnati enough because it's not Joe at the end and I know they said they call Lenardi they don't call Lenardi Joe Lenardi's never accurate on his next four out you know we could be next four out and still get into the NCAA tournament it's like the line in in football right the first down marker it's it's not the actual line folks it's off here and there the the, the selection committee and the projections they're they're not the same they're not the same so you just got to get close got to get close all we want to do is sweat man we've said it all season we haven't sweat on a Sunday in a long time. Quite frankly, the last time the Bearcats sweated on a Sunday was probably 
the Devin Downey team that lost to Jerry McNamara and didn't get in because pretty much every time after that, Cincinnati's been pretty firmly in, has never really flirted with a first four in. Right, right. And I, I, I demand that they do a live, a live presser after they release the brackets and field questions. That, that would be must-watch TV. Uh, I would love that. Fans get to ask questions to the committee on why they got robbed. Um, but you see, we've been on the wrong side of that. Uh, equation many times where we thought we were firmly in and we didn't get in so it can absolutely happen the other way and it's just kind of you know how much do they value being in the big 12 with the the best net rankings by far of any league how much do they value that you're right the out of conference doesn't help us a way to I, I truly believe a way to rig even out of conference is to schedule some solid teams on the road because you only need a net, what, top 75 ranking? You see on the road counted. Let's go to Indiana, man. Like, yeah, let's play a play a couple road games. And it, in worst case scenario, hey, you got tested on the road. Um, I, clearly, it didn't really matter for us because apparently we just couldn't win at home in conference play. We could win on the road. So neither here nor there. But, um, yeah, I think uh, we'll, we'll be looking at this out-of-conference schedule. I get why Wes wanted cupcakes because, I mean, hell, it's a gauntlet. I mean, they're playing a ranked team every damn week, twice a week, half the time. So I see why I wanted to go cupcake, cupcake, especially with half our roster. We're not even sure if Dave Yost is going to pull a miracle or not. So I see why he did it, but, you know, hindsight, it would have been nice to throw in a couple quad one wins out of conference. I had an entire melt made. All the videos of us throughout this season, obviously the Creed BYU moment was in there. Some of the other takes that we've had that have just been abysmal, followed up by the exact opposite take like five games later, you know, game five. Day-Day Thomas sucks 20 games later. Hey, day day you know, a lot of that. And it was a full melt with the green day. I hope you had the time of your lives underneath. And I'm hoping I never have to play that. I'm hoping that, all we're doing is playing Mims. This is why I'm hot the rest of the season. As for the game today, let's recap it one more time. Cincinnati holds Kansas to their lowest scoring half in Big 12 tournament history. This comes one game after the Bearcats knocked down 16 threes, which was the most threes in Big 12 tournament history. Bearcats peaking? Historians right now making history. This will be in the textbooks down the road. A 9 nothing Kansas run out of half cut a, what was the halftime deficit? Were we up 12? 13. 13, 13 points. 13, 9 nothing run, cuts it right down to four. Kansas got it within a possession at one point. Quite frankly, the Jayhawks had some really good looks in the second half to take the lead a few times. They were not able to bury them. Cincinnati wasn't hitting their shots. And then finally, um, Cats figured it out. John Newman played a much better game today was all over the place grabbing rebounds, had some big buckets in the first half. And then when it comes down to it, player of the game, Danzis, Dan Skillings, shows up once again against the Kansas Jayhawks. And for those of you that thought we were going to be playing this song today, and a lot of you thought that this was going to be the end of the Bearcats season, especially in the second half when Kansas started creeping their way back up into it, I was thinking, oh, no, we're absolutely toast we don't stand a chance. You know what I'm thinking now, Houdini, as we end the show, and this is a good time to tell you to subscribe to the audio podcast that drops on Spotify, Apple Music, in about 30 minutes. Alex Frank will have the, uh, the post-game recap. In fact, he's gone Big J for the entire tournament. Alex, you don't have to work that hard, man. You know, the, the followers don't care about BYU, man. You, you, you could stay at home in the hotel and eat yourself a crepe, you know? But this is the the song. He loves the game. He loves the game, man. He's a reporter. That's what we respect. But this is what I think we're going with right now. Maybe. CMOS for three. Bang! Dan Skillings slithers his way to the bucket. The Bearcats beat the Baylor Bears. Good night, everybody. Bearcats 72, Kansas 52. Batista with the catch!